Welcome back, everybody. So today I want to get into a topic about independence as a postdoc. Specifically, what does it mean to be independent from your PI and when should this happen and what should it look like and what should it not look like? And this is a really important concept. Um, so when you do your postdoc, as you first start, it's going to be just like grad school where you're researching exactly what your PI wants to be researching. And I'm going to use the lab that I did a postdoc in just because I'm familiar with the research and what some people from that lab have gone on to do as independent researchers. And I hope that I can illustrate what a good example is. And then I hope that I could use that to also illustrate what a bad example would be, not that it happened, but what one would look like. So the lab that I went to, the PI studied brown adipose tissue. It's a type of fat in the body, it's thermogenic, it expends energy, it, it's good for metabolism. And so the focus of her lab, all the projects across all the postdocs is all about brown adipose tissue. And they all have you know, different areas of interest, but they all stem and focus on brown adipose tissue. So. My background when I went into the lab was on the biology of aging. I was in an aging lab. So I had projects that were largely about aging and brown fat, but I also had some other ones that had to do with signaling and lipid metabolism. Other people had other interests. So there were people that were doing things related to transcription factors. There were people that were doing things with lipid transport. There were people doing things with you know, transplanting brown fat from one animal to another to try to boost metabolism. There was all kinds of brown fat specific projects that were going on. But the theme overarching concept of her lab was brown adipose tissue. So what does it mean in a lab like that to gain independence? So I'll use two examples. There were two postdocs that I overlapped with that were independent that have now moved on to be their, you know, PIs and start their own labs. So one of them, he had a focus on lipids. So he was very interested in lipids that were secreted from brown fat that could go and have endocrine effects, meaning they could go elsewhere in the body and act as a signaling molecule, similar to like a hormone. And he was really interested in how this, this tissue brown fat can secrete different types of lipids that could go and have effects elsewhere in the body. Now, he started working on a project that was involved in this and he published a paper on it and it was a very high profile paper and he continued working on this and what eventually happened was his research started having less and less to do with brown fat as the specific topic or main area of focus of his research he was more interested in this lipid so when it's in the body what could it be metabolized to what are the specific pathways that it acts on? And he started branching away from just specifically the brown fat and more focusing on the lipid itself. And he really became focused on that and how this lipid and other lipids like it could act in the body and how you could try to manufacture them and make them to have anti-obesity effects. That's how you become independent. Yes, he started off with something similar and yes, he still does have a tie to brown fat, however, his new focus is more based off of these lipids and how these class of lipids interact. So it's a little bit adjacent. Another example, there was a, a woman in, in the lab and she had a project that was doing single cell sequencing and she found this group of endothelial cells that could have thermogenic effects similar to um, the adipocytes within the brown fat. And so her work that she's now taken with her to start her own lab deals more with these different subcellular populations within adipose tissue. And so she's not necessarily working with brown fat just because it's brown fat, but she's looking deeper at the sub, you know, at the cellular population. How could I pick out these novel different types of cells? How could I use different kinds of large data sets to find these different types of cells that have thermogenic activity and how can I repurpose them? So that's kind of what she's working on. So these are two examples of people that have started in a lab that the overarching focus is on brown fat and they were able to branch out and start researching different areas. 
Um, the reason that this is important is that when you want to be able to identify yourself and start trying to get funding, you do not want to be competing with your PI, right? Your PI has already established themselves and have a name for themselves. And if you're trying to compete with them, you're never going to win. They basically have already made their name for some, themselves in that area. You need to have something different. Specifically, if you want to get something like a K award from the NIH, you really can't have the same thing. They really want to know what is your plan to differentiate yourself? How will you be different than what your PI is already doing? And if you can't demonstrate that, then they will not fund you. Um, now, when should this be happening? So what I would say is that this is something that should be starting to happen after a few years. So your first, you know, one, two, maybe even three years, you really should be focusing in the same area as your PI. But as you start getting into that third year, and especially into your fourth, fifth, sixth year, that's when you really should be starting to demonstrate that, yes, I can carry out my own research and I can be able to take my own research and move it in its own direction. And you should be starting to to build the basics, the foundation of what your lab will be. So if you're a fourth or fifth year postdoc, I should be able to look at the research that you're doing and be able to say, yes, this is what this person's lab is gonna look like. They're gonna be looking to do these things. And is that what your lab's gonna do for the whole future? No, of course not. Things change and you, you know things evolve, new technologies come out, new knowledge comes out. So it's impossible to predict everywhere that your lab is gonna go. But I should be able to know for the next five, six, 10 years what you're going to kind of be working on. And I hope that this kind of clears this up because this is something that is sort of not always talked about, especially for very junior postdocs. But I think it's really important to have this in the back of your mind that as you're going through this journey of gaining independence, one part of independence isn't just being able to write a grant by yourself. Um, part of independence is being able to move away from what your PI does and be able to start forming what is the core of you know your own lab and what the research is going to be. So I hope this is helpful. If you like this kind of video, make sure to give it a like. It lets me know that you um, that you enjoy this kind of content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.